the Bruce D. Campbell Farm and Food Discovery Center and Food and Beverage Manitoba present Where It's Made. Crickets might not be the first thing you think of when you think of Manitoba's farm landscape, but believe it or not, cricket farming is gaining popularity in North America. So the tropical house cricket is more digestible because it doesn't have as much as an armored exoskeleton compared to like our local cricket that we have. Insects, like the tropical house cricket, are an increasingly popular, sustainable source of protein that requires less land, energy, food, and water to produce than traditional meat proteins. Because they're cold-blooded, they don't have to heat their own body. So they're taking the air's heat and then developing their mass. So all of their food that they eat goes into the production of their mass. They don't lose. It's completely efficient. At Prairie Cricket Farms near Miami, Manitoba, Ryan and Leslie Stepler have been perfecting the art of cricket farming since 2016. I was a school teacher, didn't ever think about being a farmer, and started off really small. We're still a small grain farm. Then the opportunity came up with crickets, and I was like, okay, so now we just kind of, I'm a grain farmer and a cricket farmer. So it's just a little diversification on the farm. So when we first started, it was usually just my wife and I, but now my brother has been helping me and then we are getting other employees to help in the barn and then we're just kind of slowly ex expanding. So it was very weird in the beginning. At the time I was studying nutrition, so I realized that like these crickets are basically a superfood. They are very high in protein, but not only that, vitamin B12, zinc, manganese, healthy fats, prebiotic fiber, just the list goes on. Like many other Manitoba farms, it all starts in the barn, where crickets lay their eggs in large boxes filled with peat moss. The crickets like it hot and humid, so the temperature-controlled barn is kept at 30 to 35 degrees, even during the cold Manitoba winter months. We take the tray out full of eggs in the, just about an inch below the peat moss. They incubate for about eight days. After the cricket is the hatches from the egg, it is now a pinhead. So that's kind of the first step in its in its lifespan. And it actually comes out like translucent or like clear, and then it actually darkens after a couple hours. We produce approximately like a hundred thousand crickets a day. They know this because they've counted. One milliliter equals 340 crickets. After that, we measure them in a graduated cylinder and then we just kind of dump them into like a new bed. And then from that day on, they'll live in that bed for about 40 days. The nursery, or grow-out room in the barn, is a space containing four by eight foot boxes on rollers called beds. During those 40 days, they have egg flats that they live in that are all stacked vertically in the bed. and we feed and water them. So when we water them, we have to have a sponge in the water so the crickets don't drown. Because if they do have open water, any kind of pooling, they will all die essentially. And of course, nobody wants that. The feed that we feed our crickets is a chicken starter. So it's got wheat, could have oats in it, canola, soy. Um, it's just a kind of a blend. 20% protein blend. So that's kind of the neat part of it. You can take 20% cricket feed or chicken feed, whatever you want to call it, and then make 63% protein out of it. This is cricket frass, so or cricket manure, and it's a good fertilizer. The byproduct of cricket farming is cricket poop, and the Steplers have found a market for that too. It can be cleaned out of the beds and used as fertilizer. Everybody always asks me, like, is it super loud in the cricket shed? And I'm like, it's not as loud as you think because crickets, when they hit maturity, that's when the males are able to chirp to kind of attract the female's attention so they can mate. So we harvest them just kind of right around when they become at full mature adults. So there's only one room that's really loud and that's the breeder room. After 40 days in their cozy beds, these crickets are fully grown. Most of the crickets will be harvested for processing, while 10% of them are moved back into the breeding room. To harvest the crickets, they are actually frozen, so it's a humane way to end their life. Um, so they're put into a, a container, clean, um, then frozen, and then they're bagged. 
Processing takes place in the Stepler's brand new provincially inspected commercial kitchen. Food safety is always top of mind, so hats and gloves are worn to ensure there is no contamination of the product. In the commercial kitchen, we take our frozen crickets and then we rinse them, then we boil them, and then we dehydrate them. And then after that, we can either choose to make them into roasted crickets or grind them up into powder. The crickets are dehydrated in a single layer for 15 hours before they reach the perfect texture. In order to achieve the desired mouthfeel for the roasted cricket snacks, the crickets are tumbled in a paddle mixer and then put through a series of sieves to knock off the wings and legs. So right now we have three flavors of roasted crickets. There's smoky barbecue and dill pickle and salt and vinegar. People are always asking us which is the best flavor, but it really just depends on your taste buds and what you like, kind of compare it to chips or sunflower seeds. My favorite is smoky barbecue, and that's because I make the seasonings. Crickets destined to become protein powder are now milled to a fine flour before packaging. One thing about the crickets that we're always hearing from customers is, is that really the vitamin B12? amount and yes they are just crazy high in B12 so the serving size of two and a half tablespoons of cricket powder is 56% of your daily vitamin B12. People are always telling us they're low in vitamin B12 and we think crickets is an awesome way to get that in. Both the roasted cricket snacks and cricket powder are hand packaged, labeled, heat sealed and boxed ready for sale. The Prairie Cricket team also does regular taste tests to make sure each batch of roasted crickets and cricket powder meet their standards. My favorite way to consume crickets is cricket powder and that's because it's just so versatile. So it's in my smoothie every day. I also like to bake with it. I love baking so it's in all of our muffins, cookies, pancakes. Do you like crickets? <laughs> we like to snack on the whole roasted crickets. The kids will eat them for snacks, even like unflavored. Um, or we mix them into sometimes like salads or tacos. They can be a good topper on that. Yeah, it's consumed quite a bit in our household. But the roasted cricket snacks and cricket powder aren't the only popular uses for crickets. So at Prairie Cricket Farms, we're not only just the human side of, um, for the crickets, we also look at the, our dog food or pet food. So we sell our powder to some producers that take the powder and then make like a dog treat and different things like that. And our goal is to get more and more um, involved in this area because I think it's a really cool way to kind of keep that environmental footprint down while so your, your dog or your cat can be helping out with that. So it's just kind of another way to, to look at it. We also do a weekly delivery to the zoo. Monkeys, reptiles, birds, frogs. There's a lot of animals at the zoo that like to consume crickets, so we feel that's a, that's a great part about our business. So my kids help out with the chores like all the time, usually on weekends. Uh, Maverick and Savannah, they love kind of going in, they do the waterers, so that's kind of their job. They stack them up into the, into the carrier and then we walk around and Savvy really gets into like, she always wants to dump the pinheads in the bed and then Mav likes feeding, so he'll take the tub full of feed and then he'll just go around and dump it. They're, they're very helpful and, and they love eating crickets, so it's win-win. It's Canada is a leader in the development of alternative protein products and crickets are just one example. Why crickets? Well, crickets are super nutritious. Um, they're high in protein, so they're 63% protein. They're high in B12, manganese, zinc, so they're like a super food. And they're really cool too because they're super sustainable, so like they take less land, less food, less water. Manitoba raised cricket protein. Now you know where it's made.